let's see. So this is my main PC. I'm logging into that Windows 11 PC remotely. Let's see if it works. I have two operating systems on there, Windows 10 and Windows 11. On the 10 side, I'm using this as a render node and the Windows 11, well, that's currently the developer preview. So, you know, nothing can go wrong <laughs> or, or can it? Usually we're familiar with the white, with the blue screen of death. There we go. It's Windows 11. Look at that. New start menu in the bottom of the screen. How exciting is that? Oh, interesting, huh? <laughs> that is what the engineers say, absolutely. So um, I haven't got it installed on here, so we need to do that, but that's that's cool. I hope you guys have time. I can just quickly demonstrate here Dash Studio 4.15, that's the current release version, uh, and everything else that I've tested works just fine on Windows 11. On the current Insider Preview build, that we must say that. So Microsoft may make changes that may or may not allow slash disallow things to run. So it's one of those things. <laughs> Ours goes to 11. Yes, exactly. I remember that. Wasn't that on, on the iOS 11 keynote presentation? Let's crank it up to 11, like the musicians always do. So there we go. This is uh, configurations. Yeah, that's fine. This is Dash Studio 4.15 on Windows 11, and it seems to work. I'm not sure if I can... Can I use my on-screen controls? No, it's a, they're a little bit wacky when I'm using a VNC for this, or a kind of another virtual system, so I can't really manipulate the viewport through a VNC, but I'm thinking... I don't know if you have if I have content on here. Let's, let's load the mouse. Mouse is always good. Uh, he isn't there. He's not actually in the smart content, is it? He is, I think, he is poser content, isn't he? Poor little guy. Can we load something else that is in the smart content before I'm spending too much time? Uh, maybe the Felton puppet here. No, maybe the cockroach. Let's do that. Cockroach. Bruiser. So yes, I've played around with this a little bit and uh, it does work. It's, uh, it's, it's nice. This doesn't seem to be a difference in responsiveness or render times either. Whoops. As I said, difficult with the viewport controls. They're just they're just a bit too sensitive. But that is not a Windows 11 issue. Uh, perhaps without without anything, this. Oh uh, yeah, just to tell you a little bit about the system configuration. It's got uh, this is a computer that has two GTX 970 cards in it. Uh, square does this does this work just throw out a little render here not pose or anything i'll use progressive rendering i'll switch off my rendering quality and i'll give it a maximum samples of maybe uh, maybe just 200 that should be not too strenuous and let's go and put my favorite post denoiser filter on let's see if we can see if we can do something Default HDRI, so I haven't done anything, but proves a point. It does work, so that is that's good. It's one of those things when I'm thinking about upgrading things, no matter if it's operating systems or if it's anything else, uh, new versions of programs, plugins, whatever. I'm always ever so slightly. <laughs> what's the word? As I get older, I'm less. Let's just say excited about it because I'm thinking the stuff that could break is just amazing. So I'm, I'm always thinking, let's let's just not do that. But hey, there we go. It works. That's cool. Proves a point. That's nice. Let me just show you Blender quickly while we're at it. And of course, instinctively, I'm going to the bottom left here and there's nothing here. So we have to go here to the middle. I believe, um, is, is Blender even here? Somewhere, maybe it's just not pinned to the start menu. Start menu looks totally different. So this is now what we used to know from my, my regular Windows here. This is Windows 10, the <laughs> start menu from Windows 10. We have all the applications here and everything that's pinned, that's kind of on the, on the right here. And this is what you have influence over. But in Windows 11, it's all, you know, on the bottom here, in the middle, and then you have your pinned versions here, so much smaller shortcuts. And then you have this button here that's all apps. And when you click that, you get this long list of all apps that are installed. So I, I don't know. I've got Blender 2.83, really? I'm sure I've got other versions of Blender here. Let's have a look. In the Explorer, I have put all my Windows, sorry, all my Blender versions into, into a Blender folder. Here it is. 
and it looks like I have Blender 2.92 on here and I've got the latest cycle, Cycles X branch on here. Let's try uh, Blender 2.92. So I don't have a shortcut for that. Should I have really set that up? Let's go right click and in Windows 10 we had this thing that says pin to start. Do we say, oh we still have that. Perfect. Yes, absolutely. This is something that I thought as well. When I saw the preview, there it is now, Blender. I thought you just borrowed all these things, even the catchphrases with which you announce it from macOS from 10 years ago, I think. This is exactly what they did. So they emphasize what from the Mac, from what we used to call spaces. I believe we still call it that. But uh, on, on Windows, we call it multiple desktops. It's not something that's uh, brand new in Windows. We have that in Windows 10 already. I think they're just emphasizing this more and trying to get more people to use it. I think that's what it's all about. <laughs> 140% more clumsy to navigate. Progress. Yes, absolutely. Uh, maybe my sad robot animation here. Oh, we can't find that. Ah, that's a shame. Uh, can we have a junk shop? Can we find that? No, can't find that either. That's because that's on the cloud storage. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, I think I have access to all my all my OneDrive files. But look at all the nice rounded edges here. Do you see that? I mean, look at all the all the amazing improvements that have been made like by this by the team, scientifically speaking. Um yes, I think that should be is it under users? I'm sure. Under here. Then we go into OneDrive. Yes, absolutely. And there I have my Blender project here. And then I have a coffee project. Goodbye mixer. Let's do that. Mixer Sad Robot Blend 8. There we go. Let's do that. This is something I've made when Mixer closed down. I've used the 3D Universe uh, Tune Bot. It is still downloading stuff. That's okay, fine. Good, whatever. And it's an animation, but we don't have to. We don't have to render the whole animation. We can just go and render one cycle's image out. Maybe when the car comes down here. A car's already been. Uh, car. There we go. Let's, Put the car here, and then so the the, the uh, robot basically goes and is angry at the fact that you know they've closed Mixer down. So he kicks it, and then an ambulance drives by. And so that's, that's the kind of this little animation. It's on my channel. If you want to look at the um, if you want to look at the final output, I'm just going to go and render one frame of it in cycles with GPU. Whoops, with GPU compute. Uh, let me just have a quick nosy in the. In the settings here, yes. So two GTX 970s are enabled. The CPU is not enabled. We're using optics. Let's go do this. Uh, and one frame, so F12 should do the trick. Let's see what happens. It's not an auto update as such. It's just a, it's a free update, I think they reckon. Let's use a few less iterations. I don't think we need quite that many just for demo purposes. Yeah, thousand is probably a bit too much. Let's let's use two hundred. It's a free update that's coming out officially later this year, but there's been a lot of controversy around this Doral because uh, the, like every hardware manufacturer, I suppose, they want to make money out of this. So if they give away the operating system for free, that means that doesn't make anyone any money. But what will make Ultimately, what will make people money is if you'd sell more hardware. And I suppose especially Intel is interested in that since they've lost the Apple contract, essentially. Now that Apple are building their own silicon. Uh, if we were to be able to run Windows 11 on five-year-old PCs, that's not a win for Microsoft, nor Intel, nor AMD, nor any of the hardware manufacturers. So what they said, rather arbitrarily, I must say, is that they've, that they've put out some specifications that we need for Windows 11 to be runnable. So it doesn't quite apply to the current developer preview. It is more something that will be rolled out when the operating system is available for general release. Uh, and that is that processors mustn't be older than two or three years max. I think two years is, is currently the maximum. Three years, they're currently testing it. There's a lot of backlash from the community about this. You also need something called a TPM module that checks if the operating system is genuinely started or if there's some, some interceptions happened in the startup process. So the official line is it's more secure. The unofficial line is, hey, we want to sell hardware, of course. And uh, so while I can prove that Windows 11 in its current form runs on my computer, the release version will not. So none of my computers are officially capable of running it. So it's a bit of a bit of a shame. 
But hey, Blender works. For those of you who have a computer that is capable of running it, Blender works, Blender renders, Dash Studio renders. Let's have a look if Marvelous Designer also renders. And that is something I just need to quickly install. I've copied it over here. This is the latest Marvelous Designer 10 installer. Let's just go put that on here. You're welcome, Durrell. So currently, uh, people are not exactly happy about the fact that Microsoft made such an arbitrary decision and that it's kind of forcing us to uh, to do that. But fear not, Marvelous, sorry, Marvelous Designer, Windows 10 has currently an end of life until 2025. So mid end 2025 is when the official Windows 10 support will stop. So Windows 11 is going to be available by the end of this year. So it means that we have a five year kind of grace period to get acquainted to the idea of where's this Windows 11 thing going. I mean, many things can happen until that time. First of all, you can keep Windows 10 until that time. You can even keep it for longer if you want, but then you'll run the issue that uh, you don't get the security patches anymore. Pretty much like what Windows 7 and 8 users have right now. Those operating systems are no longer supported. Uh, or Windows XP, many people were running that until, you know, much after the end of life had already set in. Uh, let me start it from the shortcut and see if it works. Oh my god, this is exciting. So yes, a lot of stuff can happen in, in five years. So I'm thinking, uh, don't worry too much about it for now. They either may find it in their heart to lower the uh, the the entry to um, to to Windows 11 a little bit further, uh, or they might find people just migrate to to Linux instead. You know, instead of Windows 11. So it's one of those things that I'm I'm kind of hoping for that more people put out uh, Linux versions of their applications like the Adobe Suite, imagine they'd bring that to Linux and then we'd have, by the time Windows 10 finishes support, we could all just upgrade to Linux. I mean, that might be another interesting path to go down to. <laughs> totally playing Microsoft, totally playing Microsoft. Yes, that is exactly what it means, Jeremy. So there we go, here's Hannah. I think I may have the same issue with the viewport controls. Do I? No, look at that, marvelous designer handles VNCs beautifully. So I suppose we can we can say Sydney Marvelous Designer works on Windows 11, which means I would imagine Clo will also work. Hey, that is quite nice. Does the pretty viewport work? Yes, it does. Pretty pretty viewport works. Do do we oh, I don't have rendering here. That's only in Clo. Does simulation work? CPU simulation this is. Does it? Has it kicked in? Yes, it kind of works. CPU, a little bit slow as always. Let's try GPU simulation. Just because, you know. Oh, come on. Yes, yes. Getting it. Let me do GPU simulation here. Left click and hold onto this button and just say fast GPU. It's a little slow, I must say, but that could just be optimizations underneath the hood. That is possible. <laughs> it is good news, isn't it? So it's another one we can tick off the list that Marvelous Designer now works. Yeah, okay, so I can see it's slower, but it in principle, it does work. So I think getting that, uh, getting that fast is probably just a matter of... Um, of, you know, whatever under the hood tweaks. It could even be Windows 11 rather than Marvelous Designer. So this is faster on my on my other computer. But I have faster GPUs in there. I do have a faster CPU on this system. So eventually my plan is to go and, uh, and use this computer as my main desktop. But I can't fit my graphic cards, graphics cards in there at the moment. So that's <laughs> that's why. Okay, well, there we go. I'm glad. I'm glad about this. I'm glad we tested this. So there's another load off our mind. Thank you, Hannah, for checking in here. Durrell, I've seen that uh, Clo 6.2 has a new avatar. I'm not sure if we have that yet in the Marvelous Designer 10 library. Uh, even though there is a lot of stuff that I could potentially download, maybe they've given it to us. Uh, Stala Sansa. No, we still have the, the regular ones here. 
But if you do have Claw and Marvelous Designer, or if you want to download the Claw trial version, you can use all that content in Marvelous Designer if you want to do that. So, Camilla, there we go. Good to know. Do you know, Darrell, that is a good question. You can. There are, especially on the Mac, there used to be special hard disk enclosures available that would you, you would just take a GPU that doesn't fit into your case, you put it into a little external case, and then take a, essentially a long cable and put it into your case and either attach it with a so-called PCIe riser, that's a cable that connects the PCIe slot in your motherboard to the graphics cards, and then you supply external power to the card, a little enclosure. They used to be very expensive. Mac users are familiar with that symptom. When uh, Macs started going that way, that they got smaller and user unupgradable, there was just no room for graphics cards. And um, uh, users used external enclosures with the Firewire to the PC so that at least they could use the GPU with the Mac. And it was supported up until a few years ago when Mac said, okay, we're gonna stop this now because I don't think we want you to do that. We want you to buy our hardware and no external external NVIDIA, whatnot, that's not going to happen anymore. And uh, yes, that's the state of the Mac that we have today. If you want me to test anything else on Windows 11, do let me know. Um, let's go, in fact, let's go back to Windows 10 now. I'll go and lock myself out. There's one, one button and ha ah, Windows 10, the familiar user interface. Whoa, I'm still a little bit uneasy <laughs> with Windows 11. <laughs> 